Well, greetings, everyone. Uh, one question I've gotten several times is, is it possible to stream directly from your PTZ camera? Um, and the answer is, in most cases, yes. Yes, it is. So I'm going to walk you through how to set up an RTMP stream coming from your PTZ directly to... Well, wherever you want to send it, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Restream, whatever it is that you happen to be using. Uh, these instructions should work for any PTZ Optics or PTZ Optics clones. Um, I will be doing it on my Smart AV, um, but if you log in um, to the kind of back end of your camera and it looks like what mine looks like, then you've got a PTZ Optics or a PTZ Optics clone, and these instructions are probably going to work. So let's get logged in and I'll show you how to do it. All right, as you can see, I am logged into the back end of my camera and it drops me off on this live page and you can see what my camera is streaming here in my office, which is this nice little picture of a calendar that I have. Um, before we actually get to the RTMP settings, there is something else we need to do first, which is to set up the stream. So we do that by going into video and you can see there is first stream and second stream. Most of these cameras will put out kind of the first stream, which is your primary stream, which is much higher um, quality. Uh, and then the secondary stream is there for something, if you're doing like control software or something and you need a low quality stream, that's not gonna use up a whole lot of bandwidth. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that this stream here is set up uh, the way that our, your streaming service wants it. So the streaming services that we use here is actually Subsplash and they provide uh, a list of the things that they are looking for. So we go over to my providers thing, um, you know, okay, we want 1080p, of course we want that. There's our video coding standard, they want it in H.264, which is pretty standard. Um, some bitrate stuff, this one maxes out at 4,000 kilobits, um, so there's not a lot of value in providing it any more than that, um, because that's just using up bandwidth for no good reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's my rate control. Um, most of these are going to be constant or constant bitrate. Uh, there is a variable bitrate, which will adjust things up and down. Um, not every camera supports it, and not every streaming service does. Almost everybody's gonna take constant, which is good. Uh, how many frames per second you wanna send it. The key frame interval, this one is actually important um, and if you get it wrong you will sometimes get an error from your streaming provider so you make sure you have that um, and then our audio settings so with these settings in mind we'll go over here um, to our video settings and see we do in fact have it as h264 which is what we want we've got 1080p right there we've got um, the bit rate at 4962 or 4096 um, which is within the ballpark and fine um, the frame rate is set at 30 um, also fine um, here we got the keyframe and it's set all the way to 30 um, I'm gonna knock that down to two uh, as what my streaming service wants we have our bitrate control, so you can see constant or variable, that's what those letters mean. We want constant, because that's what it's asking for. Um, and this split and splice stuff, we don't really need to worry about. Um, second stream, we're not gonna worry about, because we're not gonna use it anyway. So we're gonna come down here and hit submit. And we're gonna hit okay. Now, it's gonna suggest that we reboot our camera. Um, we're gonna change some more settings. I have noticed on some of these cameras, if you change multiple settings in multiple um, you know, little menu areas like this um, and then try to reboot, sometimes it forgets uh, the first set of changes you made. Um, it only applies the second set of changes. So to make sure this gets applied, we are just gonna go ahead in here um, and do the reboot now. Um, just so it will come back around um, and make sure we have all those video settings correct. Um, so I do recommend that you do that. So you can't see it, but the, the camera in, is in the office doing its little uh, fancy dance um, as it resets itself. So we'll just wait a second for it to come back. And here it is, and it's back. So let's go back over to the video and check and make sure that our changes are there. Yep, so the only thing we really changed was this keyframe interval um, and that change stuck, so we're good to go there. All right, so now we're gonna come down to network. Um, and this is where we're actually going to put our RTMP information in. So we'll come down here and you'll see first stream, second stream. Well, that relates to the first stream and second stream we just set up, set up under video. Um, so you can see they're both off. So what one thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to turn stream one on, tell it whether we want it to include video or audio or both. So we're just gonna do video. I don't have any audio hooked up to it. And then you have to give it the URL um, that uh, is going to tell the camera where it is that it, you want it to send the stream to. Um, this, of course, is not valid um, because that 
address I don't even think exists. So what we're going to want to do is go to your provider. So this is YouTube or Facebook. You can find the RTMP settings. Um, in this place case, I'm going to come back to our provider, which is Subsplash. And my streaming info is right here. I'm going to first copy the server URL. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put that in here. Give it a paste. All right, so that is um, the URL of where it's going. Now, most of the time, you will also need to provide um, a code. Um, and this is a private code, so you will see on the previous page that that code was grayed out. And you're not going to get to see what the private code is um, because you don't need to know it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in order to do that, we're going to come back and we're going to get our stream name or key or code. Um, and we're going to copy that. I'm going to come over here to the network, and then I'm going to go all the way to the end um, of this one, um, of what I copied in before, um, put in a backsplash, like, or a backslash, um, like you would, and then paste in my key code. Um, and that's the, the format that uh, the, re the receiving, um, the one receiving the screen are, are going to be looking for. Um, that is actually the only settings that are necessary for um, the RTMP uh, part. So we can pretty much ignore the rest of it, assuming it's already set up the way you want to. We'll hit submit. We're going to hit OK. Again, it wants um, a reload or a reboot. So we're going to go to system. And we're going to reboot it. And OK. Now, while it's rebooting, I'm going to come back here um, to my uh, provider. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the Live button. Um, and as you can see right now, it's telling me that there's no stream detected, uh, which means that it doesn't know. Uh, there's nothing connecting to it, feeding it a video feed um, right now. Now, oftentimes you will see this um, in uh, in the back end of your streaming platform is if your camera or your other encoder is connected and sending it video, you will see it in the back end where you see it. That doesn't mean you're actually streaming to the world, right? Just because you can see it in the preview doesn't mean that the rest of the world is seeing it, you usually have to go ahead and hit broadcast. So this is a nice feature to make sure that things are, in fact, you know, set up the way that you think they are and should be. Um, and we should, um, any second now, be seeing um, the stream from the camera. So let's see how that goes. All right, so here we see um, I'm in my the back end of my streaming uh, platform, and I can see uh, the the stream that is coming uh, from my camera. Uh, my 1080p resolution is what I expect to see. The, the bit rate um, is right about where I expect to see it. Um, and then we can see how long um, that has been connected. There's a little bit of delay, as often there is. You, sit, you, know, you start broadcasting your RTMP um, stream. It takes a little while before uh, the receiving unit receives it. Sometimes it could be you know, up to a minute. Uh, so just know that you want to start streaming um, a little sooner than you expect to actually go live. Um, but yeah, we'll see that there's no audio um, coming on this because there's no audio um, coming with it. I didn't check that box for audio. So if you do want to stream something that has audio, um, you're going to need to get that audio into the camera because uh, the cameras, most PC cameras do not have built-in microphones. So you're going to need to get a way to get some audio into that camera uh, so that people can you know, hear whatever it is you want them to hear. I do have a video about that. I have also heard several reports that the line in, the quality of the audio line in on these cameras is a bit variable. Um, and some people are experiencing some static issues and things like that. Um, so that's going to probably take a little playing with. So do test that out uh, before you decide that this is the solution you want to go for. Um, and then finally, while I have the system set up the way that I do, um, what this means is anytime this camera is on, so anytime this PTZ camera is on and connected to the network, it's going to be sending out that RTMP stream to uh, my receiver um, or to wherever it is I told it to go, Facebook, YouTube, Subsplash, Restream, whatever it is. Um, that might be important because there are times when maybe you've got the camera on, but you don't want to be sending it out. Um, in order to not send it out, you're going to have to come back into your little um, backend software, um, go into network network and uncheck this box um, and go ahead and turn it off and then go through the process to save um, and reboot it. That 
may be a bit of a pain, depending on how often you want to do it. Um, getting into this back end isn't always the easiest thing to do. So do think about that, because if you have it set up this way and you just leave that box um, right here or checked on, um, it means on. So if the camera's on and connected to the network, it's going to be sending that signal. That may not be a big deal, but if you have a limited number of upload bandwidth or a limited amount of upload bandwidth, that you may want to consider whether you really want it to have it on all the time. Um, so this, in my opinion, isn't as ideal a solution as using something like an Atom Mini or a Yolo Box or anything like that to handle your streaming for you. But it is possible if you're on a budget um, and it's the way you want to do it, you can do it with a camera um, and have it stream directly from the camera. Okay, well, I hope this was useful. Please like and subscribe. There are links um, down in the description that help support this channel. And until I see you again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe, and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give, so keep that coming, and I will keep making them. Thank you.